Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. But bless you indeed. And bless you with what He's given me. May He give to you at least what He has given me. This is what I want for all of you. All of you. This is our desire. This is our will. This is what we long for. This is our ambition that you may have at least what God has given me. Do you believe this? Anyway, whether you believe it or not, what I want is what I believe, and that's what will happen for those who believe. Pay attention. We said that people have faith to conquer the things of this world. And when they have faith to conquer the things of this world, meaning to conquer the world, then this faith is not from God. This faith is not from God. Because a faith that comes from God, the faith that comes from the Holy Spirit, is for us to conquer, not this small foolish world, full of the things of hell. No. He has given us faith. God has given us faith. The Holy Spirit has given us faith in order for us to conquer the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. That's why it is written that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven is taken by force. The kingdom of God is taken by force. So, in order for you to conquer the kingdom of heaven, you have to be violent. You have to be courageous, audacious. You have to be bold. You must have a desire to conquer the kingdom of God above anything else. Anything else that the world may offer. So, when this faith is to conquer the things God has promised in His Word as the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, then He gives this faith. And when He gives faith, He gives the courage for the person to make decisions. And when He gives courage, the person will in no way run away and be afraid and shy away. No, because they know, they have the assurance and this assurance is not of the heart, but it's a mental certainty, an intellectual, rational, intelligent assurance, which is based, which links on His Word, the Word of God. By the way, by the way, when we believe in the Word of God, we honor God. When we don't believe in the Word of God, we dishonor Him. So, there's no other way. In this world, there are two types of people. Those who believe in God, they believe in His Word, they believe in Him, and because of that, they honor Him above all things. And those who do not believe, or they believe halfway, you know what I mean? Half brick, half clay, then things don't work. It's yes or no. That's how faith is. Either we believe or we don't. So those who believe honor God. Those who don't, don't honor Him. And those who believe are not afraid to lose. Look how wonderful. Those who believe are not afraid to lose. They are not afraid to lose because they know that they will gain. They will lose now to gain later on. They lose today to gain tomorrow. This is the faith that guides, that leads our life. 
we fight, we persevere, we continue. Do you know why? Because we believe that tomorrow will be better. We are sure of the greatest achievement of all, which is the kingdom of God. Because the achievement of the kingdom of this world is futile, it's pointless, and it passes away. Whoever has faith to conquer the kingdom of this world certainly doesn't have faith to conquer the kingdom of the coming world, the kingdom of heaven, where our Lord is. So, for these, or for those who have this faith to conquer the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom, you don't see the kingdom of God, do you? Jesus said to the disciples, the kingdom of God is at hand. And then he said, the kingdom of God is inside of you. So the kingdom of God cannot be seen. It's inside of you. It's inside of me. So if it's inside of me, then I have faith. I have courage to do what we wouldn't do if we had just a natural faith in the things of this world and in good luck, for example. Excuse me, please. But it's very nice. It's very glorious. It's extremely glorious. Very, very glorious. It's too rich. It's huge. The greatness of faith is tremendous. And this is available to everyone. It's not available only for a special group of people. No, it's available to everyone, especially to those who are rejected, to those who have no value according to society, those who are not respected. Because God has chosen those who are nothing so that through faith, the supernatural faith, they may put to shame those who think they are someone. Praise God. God has chosen those who have a supernatural faith to put to shame those who live by the natural faith or faith in the things of the world. This is it. So you don't understand. You who insist, you who fight in the idea of conquering the kingdom of this world. Perhaps you are that type of person who is even in the church. You have faith in Jesus, but your faith is divided between Jesus and your dreams, and your little world, your will, your desires. So it doesn't work. It shows that God hasn't given you this faith yet. And you have one foot here, another one there, half clay, half brick. You are on the fence. And you don't know that the fence already belongs to the devil. Therefore, dear friends, God has given this inexhaustible wealth this immeasurable wealth that no one sees, which the devil cannot touch. No one can steal this faith. God, when he gives, he himself preserves, he guides, he himself leads, he himself guides. Pay attention to what the sacred text says you will be astonished. You will be astonished. Pay attention. Close attention. The sacred text says, because you know, we have the Old Testament, which confirms the New Testament, and the New Testament that confirms the Old One. And the Testaments are for those who believe. 
the testaments are for those who believe for those who have been gifted so pay attention please in the old testament we have a classic example clear transparent everyone can understand it because the people of israel the children of israel when they left egypt they were slaves 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 indeed when God delivered them with his strong hands, with his power, delivered them from Egypt, he made them cross the Red Sea, he parted the sea for them, and then they entered the desert, and they lived in the desert for 40 years. 40 years in the desert. The desert the desert has absolutely nothing. I've been to this desert. I've passed by it. When we went to Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, I saw the desert. We experienced it. It's terrible. It's harsh. It's complicated. There's no water. There's no vegetation. There's nothing. During the day, the heat is unbearable. At night, the cold is terrible. But God guided his people through the desert. In a difficult place, in a far place, the longest path to the promised land. But God does the same with us today. He leads us through this faith here in this world which is what he does with me. He does with everyone that has this supernatural faith, not the natural one, because a natural one leads the person to believe in good luck. But the supernatural faith leads people to believe in God. The natural faith leads people to seek the things of the world. The supernatural faith longs for the things that is eternal, from the kingdom of heaven. So, it's very nice. Excuse me, please. When God was guiding his people through the desert, what did he do? How did God... Look at how glorious this is. It's very strong. The text says like this. Look how nice. And the Lord, the holy text says, and the Lord went before them, before the Israelites. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar or in a pillar of cloud to lead the way. It's the desert. So there was nothing written there. Go this way or right, left, nothing. There was no sign in order to guide them through the desert, only this pillar of cloud. Look at this. By day, he would lead them through a pillar of cloud to lead the way. And by night, in a pillar of fire, to give them light. At night, there had to be light. And light, the light was the pillar of fire. The people of Israel saw, they saw this pillar. Because when the pillar of cloud would move, then they would move as well. They would break camp and would go after the pillar of cloud during the day. But when it was night, it was dark, then that pillar of cloud would transform into a pillar of fire. It was the same pillar, the same pillar of cloud was the one of fire. It was the same pillar, the same pillar that during the day was visible, it was visible, 
because it was a, a cloud, a pillar of cloud. This pillar of cloud during the day, at night would become a pillar of fire. to give them light, to enlighten the way to those people, so as to go by day and night. So they had to walk day and night. Whenever the pillar of fire at night would start moving, then the people would break camp and follow after that pillar of fire. And they would do it for some time. Then that pillar of fire would stop and would become a pillar of cloud because the sun was already out. Then the people would stop. But when the pillar of cloud would move, then the people would follow after that pillar of cloud. Can you imagine this? Can you picture this? By the way, if you want more information and you want to see this pillar of fire, we are going to show it this Sunday, probably here in the Temple of Solomon, in this campaign of the void. You are going to see the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. You are going to have a better understanding of what it is this Sunday. So, what would happen? People, when the pillar of fire would stop, they would stop. When the pillar of fire would start moving, going forward, then people would go after the pillar. And the text says, that he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. He didn't move it from before the people. Look at how wonderful this is. I'll read the text again. And the Lord went before them, the children of Israel, by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. They had to move, sometimes during the day, sometimes during the night, of course. Then it would stop, the pillar would stop, for them to rest. And the text continues, He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Which means that the pillar of fire and of cloud would guide the children of Israel in the desert. Come on. This pillar of cloud by day that would become a pillar of fire by night is the Holy Spirit. When a person is guided by the Holy Spirit by day or by night, it is permanent. God does not remove the pillar of cloud or of fire from that person's life which is the Holy Spirit, which is what Jesus gave us. Jesus said, when I go to the Father, I will send another helper, which is the pillar of cloud, or rather, the pillar of cloud and of fire. Cloud for the day and fire for the night. He never never removes, he's never removed from us this pillar of fire or this pillar of cloud is inside of those who have a supernatural faith. 
a supernatural faith, the faith that sees the invisible, the faith that believes in the impossible, the faith that leads us through the valley of the shadow of death and nothing bad happens to us. The faith that protects those who are citizens of God's kingdom. The faith that protects the true children of God, children of the Holy Spirit, because those who are born of the Holy Spirit, whoever is born of the Holy Spirit is a spirit, which means they are spiritual. They have this understanding, this vision, they don't see with the physical eyes. I don't see the Holy Spirit. I don't see Him with my physical eyes. I don't feel the Holy Spirit. I don't touch the Holy Spirit. But I am sure I have this absolute conviction. As certain as God exists, as certain as I exist, I know that this cloud, that this pillar of fire or of cloud is inside of me. And in order for me to have this pillar of cloud or of fire inside of me, firstly, I had to sacrifice my entire life. I had to surrender my entire life to Jesus. I had to lose, I had to have the courage, I had to be audacious, I had to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus, to the one that I don't see, feel or touch. However, because of the belief, of my belief in His Holy Word, then I took possession of this cloud or rather, the cloud took possession of me. And this has been happening for 60 years now, six decades. This has been happening for six decades. Six decades ago, it happened to me. So what God has given me, I've been trying, I've been making the effort to give to everyone who believes, who has ears to hear the voice of God, who is patient to hear the word of God through either myself or my colleagues, the other bishops and pastors, assistants, etc., etc. Therefore, dear friends, This is the proposal that the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God has for the world, for everyone. Of course, that not everyone understands and comprehends. Not everyone wants it. Why? Because the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Who is the God of this age? Money. Mammon. Mammon is the God of this world. So those who are looking at Mammon, those who are seeking for Mammon, it's Mammon, the God of money, of wealth. Those who are focused, those whose life is focused on the kingdom of this world. They are focused on King Mammon. And that's why they don't understand the word of God. They are blind. They do not have the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night to enlighten their understanding, to guide this person's mind. Why? because they are obsessed 
with making money. They are obsessed with their faith in having good luck and winning the lottery and having good luck in the world. And those who have faith in their good luck do not have faith in the word of God, in the promises of God. And why? Because their understanding is blinded by the God, meaning the devil, the Lord of this world. However, those who have their faith in the word of God, truly, and when I say your faith, I'm speaking about your entire life. It's not more or less. It's not a little faith in the word of God. It's not an attempt. It's not an adventure. No. It's one's entire life, which is what Jesus said. Whoever wants to save his life, his soul, will lose it. But whoever loses their soul, their life, for my sake and the Gospels, for the love of me and the Gospels, this will save their life. So, here are the two options, and you have to choose the option that you think is right for your life. One day, I heard the word of God, and I opted to surrender, to have the courage, the boldness to place my life on the altar. Oh my God, here it is. In life on the altar, I don't mean to be a pastor, a bishop, not to take possession of a position, an ecclesiastical position, no, but to take possession of the kingdom of heaven. Did you understand, my dear friends? Your life depends on your decision. If you decide in your mind, with your intellect, with your rational being, and you say, I believe, I believe in what's written here, then I surrender. If you do that, there where you are, it doesn't matter if you are in prison, in hospital, in a clinic at home, or in a palace, or in a small house, in a shack, or under a bridge, it doesn't matter your social condition. It doesn't matter your educational level. None of these matters. What matters is that you are a soul. Essentially, you are a soul. You are alive. And God wants to make this pillar of fire come upon you, up into your body, and turn you into an instrument in His hands in order for you and through you he may enlighten many other people who find themselves in darkness, blinded by mammon or by the God of this age. It's your choice, dear friends. So this Sunday I will talk to Bishop Renato and he for sure will play the video of the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud that guided the children of Israel in the desert. This pillar of fire or this pillar of cloud is the Holy Spirit. When He descends upon us, then that's it. Then, dear friends, it's as though you would have won the jackpot of all the countries at once. And much more than that, actually, much more. But just for you to have a sense of vision of the greatness of the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's God inside of us. And He enlightens our understanding when we are without knowing what to do or who we should marry with, which profession to follow, which job to do. 
He gives the direction. He teaches. He guides. He enlightens our understanding. He guides us into all truth in a world made up of lies. A world of lies. A world of lies, which is the world we live in. We live in a world of lies. The only truth there is in this world is the word of God. Jesus said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. And only with his spirit, only with the pillar of fire within you, will you be able to follow the truth, the way, and find life, eternal life. May God bless you all, and I see you tomorrow in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God.